Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about a new method of combustion technology called entry ignition. And entry ignition seeks to do what every other new form of combustion technology seeks to do. We want to improve emissions and we want to improve efficiency. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, why are we still improving the efficiency of combustion engines and not just switching over to electric? Well I have a video linked in the video description that answers that question in detail. Now you may also be wondering, well what's wrong with today's combustion technology? How can it be improved? And so that's what we've got right here. We're going to look at spark ignition, compression ignition, and HCCI and talk about the drawbacks of today's current technologies and how entry ignition can seek to eliminate some of the drawbacks here. So starting with spark ignition, our typical gasoline engine that uses a spark plug to ignite that air fuel mixture, what's the drawback with spark ignition? Well the drawback mainly is its efficiency. And why isn't it that efficient? Well it's not that efficient because it tends to have a low compression ratio. So why does it have a low compression ratio? Well, because it has two stages of compression. So what does that mean? Well, you have your intake where you pull in air and fuel, then you have your compression stroke where you compress that air and fuel, and you can only compress it so much because if you compress it too much, it will automatically combust, and we don't want that to happen. So we limit its compression ratio. Then we use a spark plug to ignite that air fuel mixture and as that flame travels out from the spark plug and starts burning off that air fuel mixture, it further compresses the remaining and surrounding air and fuel mixture. And so that's the second stage of compression. And if it raises that pressure too high, then you can have combustion form in these pockets and that's called knock and this can destroy the engine. So you have to limit the initial compression ratio so that using that two stage, that second stage compression, you still don't have that knock occur and you still have a reliable engine. So ultimately it's limited in its compression ratio and because of that it's not that efficient. It does have the advantages of using the spark plug to control timing perfectly and if you maintain a good air fuel ratio, the ideal air fuel ratio, they're relatively low as far as emissions due to catalytic converters. Next we move on to diesel engines which have compression ignition. So we don't have to worry about knock with diesel engines because during that compression stroke we pull in air during the intake stroke, we compress only air during the compression stroke so we don't have to worry about an air fuel mixture auto igniting and then we inject in the fuel and injecting in that fuel it begins to burn immediately. So that's our ignition control is when we send that fuel into the cylinder and we don't have to worry about knock because it's not being compressed with the air. So we can use really high compression ratios, which means a really high efficiency. However, we unfortunately have different pockets of air fuel ratios. And because that air fuel ratio has rich pockets and lean pockets, basically a lot of fuel in some spots, not much fuel in other spots, well because of that it has poor emissions. And so diesel engines tend to be very efficient, but they have to have expensive exhaust after treatments in order to have clean emissions. So what if we combine these two technologies here, spark ignition and compression ignition? Well, we could cram them together. Basically the idea is you pull in air and fuel, you compress that air and fuel as much as is needed for it to combust, so you raise it to its auto ignition temperature, it then all combusts simultaneously, it pushes your piston down. So now we have a gasoline compression ignition engine, which has great efficiency and great emissions. The challenge here is we have very limited ways in order to control timing. So with our spark ignition, our spark is controlling when does that combustion start. With our compression ignition, when we inject fuel controls, when does that combustion start. With homogeneous charge compression ignition, we don't have that control lever of our fuel injection or our spark plug. So you have to rely on air fuel ratios and using EGR to regulate the temperatures in order to control when does combustion actually start. So it's very difficult to control when combustion starts and as a result the closest thing we have to this today is Mazda's SPCCI uh, engine which still uses a spark plug. So along comes entry ignition with the goal of eliminating this second stage of compression from combustion occurring also eliminating uh, this uneven air fuel mixture so to have a nice air fuel mixture and then also providing a complete control switch for when you have that combustion begin. So entry ignition, how does it work? So to start off let's just look at these two cylinders in the center and we can ignore these two right here. So here's our two cylinders 
both with these pistons moving up and down together. So the first thing that happens is we pull in air just like any other engine. So you pull that air in and then you compress that air. That's what this left cylinder is doing. So it has a very high compression ratio because there's no fuel in there right now. So we're raising the temperature and pressure very close to gasoline's auto ignition temperature. So it's gonna get hot, it's gonna be a high pressure, but it's not hot enough and a high enough pressure that if you inject gas in, it's going to automatically combust, very close to it. So you have a check valve here, which sends that compressed air into a pressure reservoir. That pressure reservoir then is sending that air into our mixing chamber. So as the air comes into this mixing chamber, we have our fuel injector spray in fuel and it mixes with that high pressure, high temperature air. So now you have a nice mix occurring within this mixing chamber before it goes into the cylinder. And here's the big change with entry ignition. So you have a slider valve that opens up to allow that air fuel mixture into the cylinder. And within this cylinder, it's very hot. It's a lower pressure than above, but it's very hot. So immediately as this high pressure, high temperature air is forced into the cylinder below it because it has a higher pressure, then it starts to combust because the temperature in here is very high. So pressure forces it across, and then the temperature of this combustion chamber causes it to ignite, and it ignites upon entry, hence the name entry ignition. So how do these slider valves work? Well, you can think about my hands being overlaid right here, and my fingers right now are preventing any air from above to travel below. But if I then move my fingers over on top of my other fingers, well, now there's a path for air to flow between them. And then as I continue to move my hand left, then now, once again, that air is trapped and you can't force any air below it. So what this slider valve is doing is opening up, allowing air to pass through, and then closing. So we're kind of looking at the breakdown of that combustion occurring right here. Currently, they're trapped and you have higher pressure above, so that high pressure is forcing this slider valve against this combustion chamber and it's sealing it really well. And then you move that slider valve over, which allows the higher pressure air above to travel into the com combustion chamber and then it starts to burn then it moves over fully so now you have more air coming in and what's essentially happening is you're having a constant pressure burn so you have higher pressure above but you're not using that high pressure to force the piston down instead you're using the expansion from combustion to force that piston down and it's raising the pressure in this cylinder but not more so than above here so that pressure never travels backwards so you force that piston down with constant pressure and then eventually that slider valve travels and closes back up and at that point you open up your exhaust you push out those remaining gases and the cycle completes itself so if you've been paying attention how this works is just two strokes so this is a two-stroke engine every time this left cylinder goes down you have your intake and every time this right cylinder goes down you have your power stroke and then every time the left cylinder goes up you have compression simultaneously you have exhaust so intake and power always occurring together compression and exhaust always occurring there together using this style example right here now, one of the important things to note about the exhaust stroke is that you actually close the exhaust valve a little early. And the reason why you do that is to trap some of those exhaust gases in there because they're very hot. And you're using that temperature in order to ignite the incoming air and fuel. So the pressure is going to be low because you've pushed most of it out. But because you kept some of that hot exhaust gas in there, the temperature is very high. And then you wait for the fuel to trickle in with the air and then it burns and the cycle just continues over over and over. Now there are many different ways that you could have this slider valve operate but here's just one example here. Here's a top-down view where you have a central exhaust valve. Uh, so here's a side view of that central exhaust valve. So the exhaust gases would be pushed out through there and then you have this slider disc right here which rotates with the little actuator there on the side and as you rotate that each of these holes here will open up to allow that air to pass in, the air and fuel to pass in and combustion occur. So there's different ways 
ways you could do this. This is just one example. And then when you're looking at the overall diagram, you'd actually have a few additions in order to optimize efficiency. So on the left here, we're adding a second stage of compression. And on the right here, we're adding a second stage of expansion. And this piston looks like it's the smallest and that's intentional. This looks like it's the largest and that is intentional. So basically what's happening here is you pull in some air, you compress it, you then send it to a smaller piston and then pull that air in and then compress it further. So why would you use this two-stage compression instead of just one cylinder with a higher compression ratio? Well, the reason is because as that cylinder gets to the top of that compression stroke, the chamber uh, is going to be very flat and wide pancake shaped if you use a really high compression ratio. And so this has a really high surface area with a certain volume and that high surface area means you have a lot of heat loss. So if you use a different style, if you have that more compact, not quite as pancake shaped chamber during the end of that compression, then you don't have as much surface area and so you have less heat loss. Now, as far as this second stage of expansion, the whole idea here is very similar to what Atkinson cycle engines use. And the idea is that if your expansion ratio is greater than your compression ratio, you can have greater efficiency. And so what you're doing is you're extracting all the useful work out of the pressure created by burning that air and fuel mixture. And so when this final piston reaches its bottom dead center, basically you're nearly at atmospheric pressure. So when this exhaust valve opens, you're pushing out nearly atmospheric pressure exhaust, which means you've extracted all of the work out of that expansion, uh, which is great and also means that it's going to have low noise, uh, which could be a pro or a con depending on how you feel about engine noise. So to summarize, why is an entry ignition engine more efficient? And it starts with being able to use a significantly higher compression ratio versus gasoline engines. It's able to use a very lean, meaning not too much fuel relative to how much air there is, air fuel ratio and reason being is because you have that mixing chamber where you mix the air and fuel really nicely and then as it passes in it automatically ignites because of the temperature within that combustion chamber and then finally it's more efficient because it's able to take advantage of full expansion and get as much useful work out of that uh, combustion as possible using that second stage expansion chamber. So how much more efficient is it really? And this is a pretty complicated discussion, uh, but in this technical paper published in SAE, they state that while a traditional auto cycle engine may have a thermal efficiency around 49%, this operates very similarly to a Brayton cycle engine, and as a result, its theoretical thermal efficiency is around 63%. Now, real world, both of these numbers are going to be lower of actual brake thermal efficiency, but you're starting at a greater uh, potential than with an auto cycle. And so, you know, it could be a significant improvement in efficiency. Now, are there drawbacks? Yes, and I think the easiest way to explain that is to just say that it's unproven. This is unproven technology. So when you look at this, you could say, well, what about balancing? Obviously, you have different size pistons and cylinders here, so balancing would be a challenge, but that's a mathematical problem you could overcome. Uh, what about cooling? If you have combustion always occurring in just this one cylinder and it's never pulling in that fresh air intake and cooling it down, couldn't this cylinder get potentially fairly hot? Yes, it could. Uh, what about reliability of it? What about the reliability and the durability of that slider mechanism? Again, it's unproven technology. So uh, load control, that's also a challenge. You do have complete control of timing, which is when you move, rotate this slider, but you don't have uh, the control levers that you do have, like with a spark ignition, where you simply change your throttle to change the load. With this, you're gonna be changing uh, how much fuel you're injecting and the initial pressure that you'll allow to go in that pressure reservoir. So there are challenges with it, uh, and it basically just comes down to, at this point in time, it is unproven. But it is very cool because it does have the potential to improve thermal efficiency. So thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.